So we're going to talk a little bit about hypertension in women, and we'll get into a little bit about coronary disease. I'm an interventional cardiologist by trade, but I'm a stickler for blood pressure. It's very, very important that when you go to your doctor, you follow up, you have your blood pressure checked, you make sure that the physician checks it, and you ask him, what was my pressure? Make sure the physician, the first time he's ever seen you too, checks both arms because you could have a difference in pressure from one arm to the other. And most people don't know they even have it. Sometimes they don't find out until later on in the end when they wind up on dialysis, or they have heart failure, or they have coronary disease. So it's important to realize that it doesn't always present with symptoms and headache. Sometimes people have no symptoms and their pressures are markedly elevated. So what types of hypertension do we usually see in an office setting? And the two more common types that we talk about, or the most common type rather, is primary or essential hypertension, or low renin hypertension. Essential hypertension is the type of high blood pressure that most of us have. Secondary hypertension, on the other hand, is the type of blood pressure that we see very early on, before maybe the age of 30, or that comes on later on in life, maybe even after 75 or 80. And it's an abrupt rise in pressure that's usually caused by another etiology. Essential hypertension doesn't really have a cause, but secondary hypertension can have an underlying cause that we can look into and treat. Obesity is an epidemic in this country, and it leads directly to hypertension and uncontrolled hypertension. And people will come up and say, give me a pill to make me feel better. Give me a pill to control my blood pressure. You can lose weight and control your blood pressure. If you drop 10 or 15 pounds, you can drop your blood pressure five to eight points. Why do you need a pill for that? Let's come off medicine instead of adding medicine. So this is something in your hands. And for women, it is a little difficult, especially postmenopausal women. Women often go undertreated. I once was uh, in a conference with somebody, and we were talking, and I had a question asked to me after I said that the incidence of coronary disease was the same in men and women. She said, well, why are there 800,000 coronary angioplasties a year performed on men and only 400,000 performed on women? Once again, coronary disease going unrecognized, hypertension going unrecognized. So the misconception that women are at less risk for cardiovascular disease than men is false. They're actually at the same risk, and they're often undertreated because we don't look as hard or treat them uh, as we should. In 2007, one of the studies, there was one death per minute among women in the United States from cardiovascular disease, and it claims more lives. There's always something in any presentation any doctor will give that will lump a whole bunch of bad things together and compare it to what they're trying to say. But that last line basically says, Cardiovascular disease in women claims a lot more lives than a lot of other bad things put together, and that's a simple fact.